What did you see Keith come in? He snuck in there. Yeah, he sure did. He brought his lovely wife with him. I can't see her. Yep, come over here. Hello. Morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, sir. Everybody can join us. Anybody who's snowed in today, it's, it's another miserable day in Kingman, about 70 degrees. Sunny, <laughs> sunny and warm again. <laughs> Just a uh, really good 13 in Portland, Maine. Oh my god. Yeah. That's where you're from. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Four yeah. Yeah. 18 degrees. 18? Yeah. 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 Can't imagine. Yeah. The Midwest is getting a slam yeah. right now. Yeah. That's why I love the Southwest. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> Probably should start off with introductions. What do you think, Mr. Gray? Yeah, let's do that. So, since we know Greg. Yes. I'm Greg Arnold from Antara Resort. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. And uh, I recommend coming to Kingman even for a vacation. And you can see how, uh, or you can snowbird by your winter house here. And then uh, you're probably going to end up wanting to stay, I imagine. I did. Okay. And that wasn't paid for by the board of realtors, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a paid endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm uh, Travis Langenfelder. I'm on the Kingman City Council right now. It's an honor to serve the citizens of Kingman, also a local business owner. Um, happy to be here this morning to talk about all the things that are going on in Kingman, Arizona. That's awesome. Uh, just uh, a side note, Art Steers says, good morning, guys, watching from the Canac Studios. That's uh, cool. That's uh, awesome. Steve, Steve Lesser from Promote Kingman and My Marketing Designs. Uh, I help with all the technical back-end stuff for Jim Hinckley's America and do a lot of website design to help kind of small businesses get an online presence. Michelle Atchison, I'm the new administrative assistant at the Mojave County Fairgrounds. Jim Woods, uh, new general manager at Mojave County Fairgrounds. I have a small business here in downtown Kingman called Woods Salary. Um, had the pleasure of uh, Jim and, and Steve coming over and doing a show from the South Shop uh, last month and working on turning this town into something that everybody's going to be proud of. Amen. And I'm me. <laughs> well, uh, you just took over uh, taking the helm of the fairgrounds. Yep, just uh, two and a half weeks ago. And right now we're concentrating on cleaning it up. Anybody that's been out there, it's no secret. It had a lot of trash, a lot of stuff that was stored and just got ruined, things like that. So far to date, 34 dumpster loads of garbage out, out of the fairground. That's outrageous. <laughs> just and so, exactly, and we've already got that. We were, I was just explaining to Travis and, and everybody here that we're trying to solve the problem between the equine events and the motorized sports. What we've done, we're going to double the footprint of the motorized sports on the north end of the fairgrounds where there's more commercial property, more the I-40 goes through. It will, you won't have as much noise problems with the houses around the fairgrounds and things with it being down there. Oh, nice. um, double the size and make a true class A motorcycle track, four wheel track, things like that out there and, and we're gonna set up bleachers with shades in different parts and how just have an out of just good. Area. Yes. How big is the fairground? Sixty eight acres. Wow, all right. That's that's substantial. Yes, it is a nice piece of property. And then Dustin Lewis of Lewis Construction also has the BMX track that he built himself. Wow. Um there's a bit of the confusion. Dustin is not giving up the running the BMX track. He has a gentleman that's helping him and that's a sort of confusion that was in the paper the other day, but Dustin is maintaining it, running it, things like that. He just needed some help doing it because his business is expanding. Yeah. And yeah, of course, and it's it had the nationals last year for BMX, and this year they're also having the nationals. It's great. You can see it right from the interstate. Exactly. It's a, it's a great community feature. You can see right from the interstate. And what that does, it frees up the rodeo arena for equine event to where we can maintain the arena to PRCA standards year round. That will draw in. Ropings, barrel racings, other equine open shows, English Western, everything else like that in that area. And then we have another arena 
over on the stall size that we're going to start bringing up the car. That way I can have a, two equine events going on at one time, whether it be a roping mm -hmm. with cattle, because Rodeo Arena has the, the equipment to handle cattle. And then the other arena to where you can have Jim Connors, things like that at the same time. Because we have 200 stalls available there at the fairground right What's a Jim Connor? Jim Connor is, um, it's a competition for like poles where you run the pole pattern. Oh, okay. Uh, you run barrels and there's other different things you can do. But when I was a kid, we'd do what was called rescue ride. You get some idiot to stand down at the end of the, road, the arena. Then you run your horse full blast at them, make a turn, they jump on the back of your horse, and then you run all the way back. Oh, wow. And that's a timed event. It's also a lot of fun. And then you have other events you can do. It's good for the kids. The kids come out there. They're doing their equine skills, horsemanship skills, and it's good for the horses, and it's just a lot of fun. Well, it sounds like a great time. <laughs> it is a blast. Yeah. It is a blast. But you get, I was a, um, I started rodeo when I was mutton busting when I was four or five years old. Went up into Little Bridges Rodeo, high school rodeo, college rodeo, and then PRCA rodeo. So I'm sort of a rodeo guy. Uh, and, and, you know, between running cattle ranches and things like that most of my life, um, I'm more of an equine guy. I did, did, there's no doubt, no, that just ain't. And so I see the facilities out there back when it was running racehorses. You got 200 stalls. You have two arenas. You've got grandstands. You've got portable grandstands for the that, that you're going to take out and make permanent for the motorized sports. You've got parking out the wazoo. Anybody that's driven to Phoenix this time of year looks in Wickenburg and looks at that big roping arena where they're roping almost 24 hours a day. All the snowbirds are coming down to rope. They've got over 300 RV spots to where they can hook up their trailers and stay there. They're running a thousand head of cattle every two weeks. Wow. Yeah, we were just struck we just drove through there the other day. It was packed. Yep, absolutely. Yep. It's packed all winter long. Mm -hmm. they, we had a question, someone who was asking if we can actually improve the fair next year. Yes. The dirt lot made it quite messy. Yes. Well we're working on improving, changing the flow. Um, I talked to Brown, who has the uh, <coughs> carnival rides. And we're going to start working on the flow, trying to get the flow where people can get things easier. Uh, the food court, instead of having just this big giant area with five things of food, um, integrate vendors into that as well. That way you can have more walking area plus the inside vendors. This way you can eat and then go shop a little bit and then you get hungry again. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Also, what we're going to do is go through a cashless system for buying alcohol. Um, it would be tokens. That does two things. It centralizes your cash so you don't have cash spread out in well, all the different areas. Um, we used it in Texas. It worked fantastic. Um, you come into the machine, you put your swipe your card or you add your cash, you get your tokens. When you want to buy an alcoholic product, then you go to the token, you just pay them in tokens. That does two things else. The second thing, you're able, since you don't have cash spread out all over the fairground, you can expand how many places that you can buy different beers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Because there's no cash, it's all centralized. Oh, wow. We're trying to, to take away the cash aspect out there and use more credit cards and things like that. That way we don't have the liability of counting the cash and things like that. It just money our That's very time consuming yes, too. Yes, it is, it is. And it ends up, and what we'll do, there'll be draft beer uh, from like the Black Bridge, Tim Schrader's Brewery, and of course Ricky Cricket as well, and other breweries, that will be the crack beer. Everything else will be the 16 ounce aluminum bottles. Those two things. Inventory, you can count your inventory better. Second thing is recycling. That's an extra money. We have such special barrels for the aluminum, that way we can recycle it instead of just plastic cups all over the place. You know, the, when they had it tied in that the Best of the West Festival, uh, mm -hmm. that opened uh, huge opportunity and showed the potential um, because there's a lot of interest, especially with our European and international travelers. Absolutely. Western heritage. That's probably as, as important as Route 66 is, is as far as an interest. We, uh, the year of the Best West Festival, uh, we did uh, hosted Drew's Bestes mm -hmm. out at uh, Kingsman Dinner, the rodeo, the dance. And uh, if you go to the Dutch Route 66 Association website, you'll see, you'll see a lot of pictures from that event. Well, it's something else at the fair too is what we're going to try this year. Um, the 
National Cowboy Mounted Shooters Association, which is over 25,000 strong nationwide. What they do is they set up a course in an arena and they ride their horses at a, at a run or a, they have a fast gallop and they literally shoot at balloons as they're riding through oh, there. Man. And it's a timed event and it also for your ability to hit the targets, they shoot blanks and it's the heat and the wadding that blows up the balloon so there's no live rounds. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. 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 Like, no ricochets. Even though that wouldn't, there is some entertainment value to that. Right. <laughs> 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 there's still, we only sold three tickets to this event. Keep it working. That's what happened. You know, that's not the bullet for the best, right? You know, people look like a golf cart so worried about golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a degree of difficulty there, but yeah. they're, we're working with them to try to get the exhibition out there for the fair, that way they can see that. I also talked to some people out in Amarillo, uh, having an old time, old west, wild west show with the buffalo, the Indian fights, just like Buffalo Bill did back in the day, oh, wow. and bring that kind of thing out there. Oh, cool. uh, <laughs> just turn it into a fair again, you know, and have the midway, and have the animals, Things like that out there. And the food. And the, food. And the fried, the fried food. bread. <laughs> fried Twinkies, fried sticker bars, fried ice cream, fried pickle. I haven't tried it all. <laughs> we just just it's good. We just just want to make it fair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just talking about all that made me want to get on a treadmill. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, you know, even can, uh, indoor car show type situations. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've got a great uh, project underway. We'll talk more about it next week. But uh, we have the world's only electric vehicle museum here in Cambridge. And it's, been, it's embryonic, and it's, it's for a multitude of reasons, it's been kind of uh, stagnant. Uh, we can't go into a lot of details until next week, but a prestigious collection in uh, Los Angeles do just donated 14 vehicles for this, and the museum in Indiana has donated some vehicles. And uh, one of the things we've talked about for a couple of years is centerpacing that museum with an electric vehicle and alternative energy uh, showcase. Mm -hmm. And the fairgrounds would work just wonderful for that. that well, what I'm, because I am also a downtown merchant and I'm members of all the merchant associations in downtown. It's not that I want that the fairgrounds should compete with downtown. They're in no way, shape, form, fashion. The fairgrounds should be in a direct and equal partnership with all the downtown merchants. That way, we use both as draw cards for tourists and shopping and things like that coming out. We've got the Home and Garden Show coming up in April. Um, that is going to be something that we're going to definitely push and we invite and want all the downtown merchants that has anything to do with home and garden, which decor is home yeah, and garden. That's just about all of them, exactly. really. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we want to make sure that we get them downtown for this kind of show. Um, also, the inside car shows. We've got 21,000 square feet of covered and climate controlled buildings that have the double doors that you can get your vehicles in there. And not just cars, but motorcycles, things like that. That way, the people that have the cars, they polish on them for a week, get them ready for a show, then they go inside. There's not the dust blowing. There's not everything that happens around. Everybody knows in Kingman that the wind blows all the time. And so you've got dust coming off, and you've got that dust coat on your car. If it's inside, you don't have to worry about that. We never used to have such a wind problem. They put these big fans out here. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually made, uh, for aircraft, it makes a black zone for aircraft. Scott, the radar. Scott Dutton says if we used live ammunition in an event downtown, it would put Kingman on the map. It most certainly would. <laughs> <laughs> most certainly would. You know, it's six o'clock rain, it's six o'clock. But there's, there's so much potential, you know, with that fairgrounds. And, uh, it just gives us that's a that's a big edge over having some bullheads. And you mentioned you know integrating this with downtown. Business. Absolutely, that's the problem I had when they were really pushing and proposing the downtown development district. The biggest problem I had with that is it was a downtown development district. It, it wasn't integrated with anything. All of these things have to be integrated and with long term planning. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it's just uh, it, it's it's just a shotgun approach. Well, we're trying to get build a plan right now. And we're, the, what's happening is, is our customers are coming up and building a plan for us with the things that they're wanting to do and, and are already renting buildings and things like that to do it. We still do weddings. We just booked a wedding yesterday uh, for in October. Uh, still do that because one of the rooms, all the rooms are 60 foot by 100 foot. 
and then one room has a commercial kitchen in it. Uh, it has PA system throughout. It had, of course, it's climate control. And so it's just a huge area to be able to do something. Also trying to get um, more of the business type parties, you know, where they come in and they have their conference or things like that. Cause that we have weekends full, okay? Well, there's four days that it's just empty. So if you have a conference area or something like that where you can bring in, they can eat, have the conference, have the video equipment and everything else, that fills up the whole place all the time. Right, I know the Seroptimists are having their event very soon. Yep, we have this going to be out the fairground. Those women yeah, do so much great work. Yeah, they really oh, they do. They're amazing. Oh, they, they do, and, and they do our ticket booths when they on all at the fairgrounds and at the. Uh, That's right. Cherish is always in a booth. Yep. There. Yep. Always in a booth. Make sure everybody gets their wristband. Exactly. <laughs> but there's, and we're going to clean up things, make it more efficient. Um, it, that's the main thing is making it more efficient. Um, it's has been run very well for thirty years. It's and a new day. It's it, and we're starting over fresh from scratch. That's right. On the first of the year, and that's what we're going to do. And we're working on financing and things. There's always the big deal is financing. And Steve is building us a new <laughs> website, yeah. and he promised me it will be the best one he's ever done. <laughs> he's going to literally. No you know, pressure. He'll be, no. No, I was like, <laughs> he'll be involved the next time you see him after he tries to get me where I can run Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know it's a success, right? right. You know, it's, it's really refreshing to see things like projects like this moving forward. It gives me, it's, it's a sign that Kingman's rushing towards the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Relatively quickly now. Yeah. 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 Good. But well, you know, one of the problems we've always had is branding. There's no, you know, we tried in 2014. Uh, we came up with a theme when we, we brought in the Electric Vehicle Museum, and Kingman was the, the uh, crossroad of the past and the future. And speaking of branding, these two guys have cooked up uh, another a scheme to kind of brand Kingman. Yeah, well, um, so I'll just jump right into it. So <laughs> let's talk, we've had this branding discussion, shoot, for many times, you know, this past year, and just, um, maybe in the last couple of months, <clears throat> these two guys and myself, we've, we've kind of collaborated um, because looking around town, I just felt that um, a lot of the stuff that you see, that you see in Kingman, uh, it doesn't tell like our full story. Like, what does it mean? You know, what is Kingman all about? You know, what is it like to live in Kingman? Um, and I thought that we could do a lot better with um, just the tourists that are coming through town, kind of building upon what our story is. You know, I mean, this area. Is, is amazing. We have natural amenities and just incredible outdoor opportunities. We have incredible history, um, including like the Army Airfield. Absolutely. Um, but a lot of that, you know, if, you, if you're just coming through town, you're a tourist, you don't see a lot of that stuff. A lot of the stuff the, that's like Route 66 branded, um, you don't see a lot of stuff that's Kingman and Route 66 co-branded. Um, the Wagners actually mentioned that to me the first time, Steve Wagner and his brother. And, and I said, you know, you're right. Um, and just some fresh, some fresh stuff to kind of show, you know, this is kind of who Kingman is and what we're all about, and kind of some of the things in our in our history. So, what were some some good ways to do that? So, what we thought was um, collaborating together, and with Steve's design and creative abilities, um, we're, we're coming out with um, something that we called the Kingman Life, um, and it's going to be just a variety of, uh, you know, you name it, shirts and hats. Tote bags and magnets. We've got some um, display boards that we'll show you. And, and the goal with this really is, is kind of twofold. The first one I just kind of talked about is, is kind of the branding. Kind of, you have so many international people that come through town. You know, if they can leave with, a, with a, like a piece, a well, souvenir, a souvenir, you know, a magnet or a hat or a cup or a tote bag or something or a shirt. Right. Um, and some of the local um, vendors downtown, they're going to participate um, to well, help sell. a patch on your hat. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And then the other goal, though. Where could we get that? Done? I don't know. Yeah, right. That's right. The other goal. Hardy's a nice guy. Yes, he's a nice guy. What I wanted to try to do with this is try to create a passive income stream for a gym and to solidify and to hopefully broaden his Kingman tourism efforts for Kingman, his promotional tourism efforts for Kingman. So, so, what, so what this hopefully will do is, is create a, 
um, sort of a passive revenue stream for Jim um, to keep doing what he's doing because he's doing a great job. He goes out um, across the country, across the world. Mm -hmm. He promotes Kingman to just everybody. all sorts of different groups. He knows everybody. <laughs> so um, if we can help to, to push some funding towards him, you know, that's that's great. So Jim, I'll, I'll show you some of these. Um, and I'll try to kind of show them. Uh, so like this one, for instance, you know, a lot of people that don't, aren't familiar with Kingman, they're not, um, they don't know about our gem of the wall pies, right? So we did a lot of the wall pies stuff. Like this one's the wall pies drawing. We did some some different Route 66 stuff. Um, this one's an elk. Um, maybe look like Batman. Yeah. You know? Elk man. So, so King of Arizona. And, and to kind of touch on what he's yeah. talking about with tourism, um, when I was handling the marketing at the Ramada, you know, they were, during, certainly during the summer months, you have so many, you know, you're selling out every, every single night, and they started to develop a gift shop. And when you start to, to work with a gift shop, you work with the vendors. And when you work with the vendors, you start getting insight on what tourists are buying. And the one thing that was really clear about the tourists purchasing habits when it comes to stuff on the road as they're traveling is it has to be branded to the town or community, not just the broad Route 66 stuff. So you'll find when you start looking at some of these shops that are very successful, like Williams is a good example, a really successful tourist town of high money spending from tourists on stuff. A lot of Williams branded things, not just generic Route 66 or generic Arizona. So this was a way to really encapsulate um, a lot of the, the iconic parts of our community and mix them in with things that are recognized from around the world, the Route 66 branding, right. you know, the state branding, the Batman symbol, and those are the things that they really yeah. want to have. Because they, can, they can't get that everywhere else. Um, that's one thing that when you talk to some of the, the Route 66 vendors who are selling stuff up and down the road, that's one thing that they say. They say, if they could have picked up a Route 66 magnet a thousand miles ago, why are they going to buy another one from you. It has to be yeah, special. It has to be unique, kingdom specific. Yeah. Right. So, so um, here's a couple more. Like this, a couple with the um, Route 66 brand and Kingman. Retro. Uh, kind of retro. Nice. You know, it, has, it says Kingman Route 66 Arizona. This one has uh, another Volkswagen bus road trip. Uh, Kingman Arizona Route 66. Um, so those are some some other ones. You can explain the air. We took this off of an old. Um, Oh, yeah, well, airline. So yeah. we're gonna make this a shirt. This yeah, is a kind of a cool retro that's shirt. That's from the uh, TAT Airlines. It was started by Charles Lindbergh mm -hmm. in uh, 28, 29, and Lindbergh was here. Uh, in fact, the terminal building from that is still uh, in King. That is now Friday Construction. Right over there. But uh, it was the first first uh, airfield set up here in King. That kind of talks a little bit about the history, right? And Andy Samson and I have been kind of working on this, trying to. Pinned down for certain, we're 90 percent certain that uh, Amelia Earhart was here for the Ruby Cut. Really? That, but we're still, still trying to trying to pin that one down. Yeah, so we've gotten a lot of help from yeah. people in the area. You know, Rob Chilcote has really helped out supplying. Absolutely, a lot of Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. And, oh, and, and he's here. Here and images. Yeah. So we had to yeah. give a shout. And this is the last one I'll show. Um, speaking of that one, so this one's kind of hard to see, but um, you know, we're going to do a, a line. Um, that kind of celebrates the history of our Army airfield. So back in like 1942, this place, there was just, you know, I don't even know how many B-17s were here during the war, Rob. Just for training, I'm gonna say about 30. So 30 or so, wow. But yeah. after the war, it was a little over 1,800. 1,800 wow. B-17 bombers here in Kingman. So, you know, and all of them, they had this really cool nose art, you know, on them. So we're gonna take some of the cool nose art designs and we're going to slap them on some shirts and this one says uh, you know uh, 1942 Keeman Army Airfield, Keeman Arizona, um, really cool you know Joshua trees we have Joshua trees in the area you know so we did one with a Joshua tree that says Keeman Arizona. Mountain biking we have mountain biking right so there's over what there's over how many miles of trails? Oh gosh, gosh. You know, so I don't know many. off the top of my head but yeah, I looked up 70 road. miles of just in our yeah, yeah. And, and usable space. And Creta right now is actually working to, yeah. to forward those and progress mm -hmm. those. This one's actually my favorite you know I've heard people say Kingman is in the middle of nowhere and it really bothers me. I don't like it and, and I think it's a lack of branding. So we did a shirt here if you can blow up on that one it's got um, you know Route 66 and shows Route 66 that goes uh, east west. It shows I 40 that goes east west, and then it shows Interstate 11 that's going to go north south. And this one says uh, Kingman, Arizona, in the middle of everywhere. 
we're not in the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of everywhere, and we really are. I mean, we're you not, know, we're not in the middle of nowhere. But if you squint hard, you can see it from here. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so, so hopefully, um, you know, it'll, it'll go well. We're going to kick this off. We're going to see how it goes. Hopefully, it, uh, it creates a revenue stream to, to help Jim to go out and do what he does best. And if you're a merchant and you want to carry this uh, this type of branding, uh, just let us know. Just message the Promote Kingman page. We're going to have a website, of course, put up uh, pretty soon. Um, and we're just lining up our vendors to actually create the supply chain for these right now. You want to talk about the hashtag? Uh, yeah. So you've had this great idea about the hashtag. Yeah, so, so the idea with the hashtag is, is that the branding name is The Kingman Life. So we threw a hashtag in the front of it. For those who aren't familiar with hashtagging on social media, uh, basically what it does is it creates a link to that hashtag. And so anybody in the world that hashtags that, those combination of words, the kingdom life, you click it, and in Facebook or Instagram, you see every single post from around the entire world who's used that hashtag. Outstanding. So if you use very generic yeah, ones like right Pepsi Cola, you're going to see all kinds of stuff. But when it's pretty specific like this, that means that you can start using it to, to really brand out the hashtag more. And so what we're going to be doing is things like competitions and uh, contests with people who buy this gear, who travel around the world, go back home, they take a picture wearing it over in Switzerland or Germany or, or Australia, and they hashtag it, and that way we can track them. And then we're yeah. going to start doing some free, free cool. gear for people who send in the best, most creative pictures. Wow, right? Like a little contest. Yeah, yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's one of the ideas. It's all about um, you know, we're so fortunate to live here, and I think that you know we have this opportunity to, to all build and expand upon you know really where we are, where the county seat. We've got all the search history and, and national amenities. We need to show people all over the world, you know, what it's really like to be in Kingman. Right. So, you know, it's, it's really cool. End of the 70 degree weather at the end of the summer, right? right? right. It's, it's astounding, you know, Kingman is, all the 166 communities are in a very unique marketing position. Because they're association with Route 66 and there's a huge international community. But the communities along 166 in the Southwest, that is magnified dramatically. And Kingman is, uh, with its location on the edge of Grand Circle, Route 66. It's just astounding, the tourism that rolls through here. Oh, yeah. Uh, just uh, in the last week, Sunday morning, I had breakfast with a lovely couple from uh, Brazil mm -hmm. that were spending Christmas at the Grand Canyon. They stopped in Kingman. We wow. had breakfast here at Calico's. Uh, they're working on possibly putting together the Brazilian Route 66 Association. That's great. Oh, that would be awesome. Yesterday, I met with a gentleman from the Netherlands at the coffee shop down there. And it's every day, it's constant. It's not just internationals. We have a huge domestic audience yes. with the fairgrounds that we can draw from. Within 400 miles of Kingman, there's 10 million people looking for great weekend type getaways. And you mentioned the trail system. Oh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, we sat down with folks from bicycle uh, outfitters mm -hmm. and the people who are working on the trail system and the creative. And uh, it's incredible. We have one of the top five trail systems. In the state of Arizona, we do. Uh, we do. Monmouth Gardens is listed as Little uh, Monument Valley, mm -hmm. and Bicycle Outfitters actually rents bicycles here. Right. It's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we need to get the word out about. Really, I mean, it's I mean, it's a really amazing place. It really is, if you know. And the thing about the trails for the bicycle as well, it's also equine friendly. Every one of them was built equine friendly. So yes. if you're coming to, and there's a lot, great deal of vacationers that haul their horses. And you'll be able to stall at the fairgrounds, but be able to take advantage of over 100, almost 100 miles of trails on horseback. Right. You can also take advantage of our RV spots that we yeah, have. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, How many RV spots do you have? Fifteen. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yep. Electric water. This is out, so. another example when we're talking about integrating this. Exactly. You take the fairgrounds, integrate it with the trail system people, people developing the trail systems, and you can market this now to mountain bicyclers, bicyclers mm -hmm. as well as equine people. Right. And it becomes a win for everybody in the community. That's right. That's right. Because but it includes almost everybody in the community. That's the whole thing. You're not picking one group over another. You're including everybody in all the different things we can do around here. Because that's so your point. Out. Right. And as you pointed out earlier, some people, you know, say, I was uh, downtown's competing with the fairgrounds. It's not a competition. Nope. Kingman is one organism. If one thing is doing good, we're all doing good. Don't let it chop off our arms. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we all need to work together. Making compliment, making compliment each other. You know, when 
there's a large event going on at the fairgrounds. Downtown gets busy later that night. Exactly. Right. Right. So and then we've got to the well. restaurants and, and the Absolutely. shopping and things like that. Yeah. That is something that the fairground definitely wants to work with downtown merchants and restaurants. Mm -hmm. And not just restaurants downtown, all over town. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a great restaurant up in the Walk Pies. They want to go up there and feed, see the elk and things like that as well. Yeah. Uh, Dan Bar, all the other restaurants as well. The Green Bowl Diner over on Northern. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, and yeah. Rutherford's as well. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so you start promoting all of them. Yes. And then when you have events like Dustin's bringing in the Nationals for BMX and you've got 1,500, 200, 2,000 people coming in there, all right, they're going to eat. They're going to, go, <laughs> yeah, they're going to do a lot of things. Well, then you start promoting all the restaurants mm -hmm. and, you know, where they can come in and say, where, yeah. where, do we, where can we get something to eat? And you just hand them this flyer and they're like, holy. What, how, there are this many, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, because we do have a lot of restaurants here. If I'm not mistaken, there's 77 in Kingman. Yeah, 77 I, restaurants. Here three months ago, we were looking to see what all amenities were here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's your call, right? Yeah, yeah. there's 77. Two hotel motels. Yeah. Wow, there's about to be more. Yeah, yeah there sure is. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, awesome. you know, doing that kind of thing, and that, it, that just takes a printer and a computer to put it all on a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. And have it everywhere because somebody's going to ask somebody a question at some time, and you just reach around and get the information to hand it to them. Yeah. And that's working with everybody. Or they can go to promote Stockton, Kingman. Exactly, yeah. promote Kingman, have websites that can do that. Uh, that includes everybody. But Stockton Hill, that's the shopping district, really, the main shopping district for Kingman. It's grown up to be that way. Mm -hmm. So if you need to get anything, at, you know, from tires, mattresses to Sure. Anything in between, yeah. you can go right on Stockton Hill and yeah. get everything you need. So you've got a big shopping district here. You've got the downtown shopping district, which includes antiques, saddles, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all kinds of things there. And then the restaurants as well. And of course, libations, because there's two places in downtown that serve excellent, three places that serve excellent libations. And so you've got a combination of all three, and then hopefully some top-notch entertainment at the fairgrounds as well. Man, that's great. Mm -hmm. okay. Time almost together. How soon will you be ready to start if people want to carry this merchandise like the Southwest Trading Company? Or Greg Gassick, if he's watching, because yeah. he runs up and down from needles and everywhere. He's else. everywhere. Uh, so how soon could they... Uh, we just finalized right. the last final revision of the final revisions <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. officially, these are the ones that are in the line. Right. So right. Yeah. It's just kind of... you know. Be a matter of maybe a couple of weeks to, oh, to get the printing done. Yeah, you know the initial printing. I would ask if you would put a bucket horse on one, just because. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Western right. stuff. All right. Got to bring in the Western stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's a part of our history. Yeah. Exactly right. right. And that's kind of what it's all about. Right. Our right. buffalo skull, you know, with Route 66 in it, yeah. something mm -hmm. like that. You know, just. So I'm going to bring in the Old West as well because right. yeah. there is a lot of tourists. Jim and I have talked about it as well. Mm -hmm. They come to do the Route 66, the cars and everything. They still want to see Gallows. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Go get to Southwest. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, you get some fun ideas. You know, that, that's kind of what it's all about. I mean, we have um, all sorts of different people who came in, and this is just you know some fun, some fun ways to show all the things that we can do here. You know, it's it's right around typical, it kind yeah. of breaks the mold. So, yeah. You know, a lot of other good yeah. ideas, the things that we just hadn't, you know, hadn't thought of. It's just the we're trying to get, yeah, first right. the initial run. Well, it, it, a lot of people don't realize this, right in Kingman and the surrounding area, all the way down in Fort Mojave and Havasu, there's over 20,000 head of horses privately owned. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. When I was doing due diligence for the saddle shop, you know, you don't want to open a saddle shop where there are no horses. <laughs> so, doing that, taking the survey and, and seeing how many horse properties there are in Kingman, Golden Valley, all the way down in South County, 20,000 head of horses. That means there's probably at least 15,000 owners. Most people have two, one to two, sometimes more. Well, then you're talking about a part of the population that isn't really getting tapped into. For the downtown and for the shopping and things like that as well. Right. You got to realize we have one feed store now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. That's and Kim does an amazing job. She really does it. She's built a really, really good business out there. But that's it. One feed store and two in Golden Valley. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple projects going too, Steve. Of course, you've always got at least four in your yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this working on four right now while we're sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have the 24-hour website, that's the newest one that I, I launched. Uh, the idea with that 
is uh, some statistics to throw it out. Yeah, uh, throw out. Yeah, is forty six percent of businesses in the United States don't have a website. Um, and there's there's usually a number of reasons, but they when you start boiling down the reasons, and you start asking, polling, and doing some research on it. It's it. There's two actual hard reasons why, and it's time and money. And then they go hand in hand, whether they can't afford a professional to do it, or they don't have the time to learn it themselves, or they got a website years ago, didn't have time to maintain it, and lost it. Uh, but forty six percent is almost half of all the businesses out there. But every single one that you ask, you know, hey, well, why don't you have one? Do you think it's important? They all agree that it's important. And then when you look at the actual statistics on how many people are searching online, we all know everybody's online. We all have phones in front of us. We're doing a social media thing. Everybody who's watching it all has phones in their hands. Everybody knows that you search using your phone. You search on a computer before you take a trip. But time and money are these huge obstacles. So um, as a business owner of a website company, from large websites to small websites over the last, you know, close to a decade now, I look back at those two reasons of why they were such obstacles and how can I, without killing myself, trying to cater down to these levels and making it easier, how can I make it work so that this 46% isn't left behind? Right. Because that's what ends up happening, is that they, they don't have a website, they don't get the online presence, their sales are at a certain level, someone else comes into town that does have all these active things, has more money, has more time, whatever it is, and then they go away. Um, so uh, I looked at it and uh, I looked at the last 36 years, which is actually how old I am. That was when the very first website was built. And I looked at the way the process was for website construction from client to designer and how it went, you know, and how the communication and how the process was. And the one thing I noticed was it's the exact same for 36 years. The exact same process of you have to search out a web designer, then the designer gives you a proposal, you have a meeting, and then you go back and forth about the design ideas, then you have to put down down payment because it's a lot of time. Now you've had two or three meetings, you're taking up my time, you're taking up your time. You know, then you get a, uh, you look at one mock-up, you don't like it, you revise it. All of a sudden this huge long process has to cost a lot of money because it's taking up a lot of time. Back 36 years ago, the software that you needed on a computer to be able to do it was very expensive. Licensing was very expensive. And that process has stayed the same all the way up until today. And, uh, but one thing that's changed is the tools are more affordable. The process is much faster. It doesn't need to be like it was 36 years ago. So there's a disconnect in the efficiency of web design the cost of the software and the hardware to make it happen, cloud-based services making it more affordable, the ease of information, there's a lot more information more readily available, why isn't the actual website uh, more affordable and faster to make? So um, I changed it, I, I literally took that, I, I, I reverse engineered the whole thing and said okay let's just make it simple for this 46%, the ones that literally don't have time and money and they just need to get a website up. And so what we did is I licensed and I built 118 designs that can be used for multiple different you know, areas. A lot like templates, a lot of people recognize the word templates. But usually when you say templates to somebody, it means that they have to do it themselves in that template. Or they get restricted within the bounds of the template. Okay, So that would be, I want to change this header image, but it doesn't let me. You know, I, I want it to be bigger or wider or different looking, and it doesn't let me because you're within these bounds. Well, I've been building websites using building block code, which allows me to modify anything I want for years. So what I did is I designed these templates and I licensed designers who are using the same building platform in having these all these building block designs done, pre-done, where you can literally just look to see what design you like, you hit go, it then brings you to 24 questions, which is a really, uh, really the only thing we need for a website is text and pictures, those two things. But you got to get the right text and the right pictures. So it's a survey with 24 questions that asks all the identifying questions that you need to have a successful website. Because you need to tell the story of you the business. Have, you have to have a story. It has to be personalized. It can't just be, you know, if you're if you're a steel manufacturer, personalize it with more information about the CEO. You know, you look at Papa John's and he got on he got in front of the camera very frequently because he personalized it. Um, uh, the guy that did Men's Warehouse, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but... Everybody remembers the voice though. Yeah. Which, and, 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 and he personalized suits. It wasn't just about the suit, it was about the person wearing the suit, you know? And so you, you tell the story with this survey, you supply us with pictures, and within 24 hours, I have three different people that are working on this with me, down in Bullhead and here. 
and within 24 hours you get a website done. Wow. And that's it. And that's then, a quick and, and Yeah, there, and there isn't a lot of this back, there's no back and forth. It's literally, get us the information, you pick out the design, it's done, it's up and running, and you get it for a year. If you decide you need more customized, a lot of clients I have, they are much more customized, they need changes every month, that's a different story. But for the 46% that don't have anything right now, this gives them a trial in a sense on whether it will be successful or not, is it something that will benefit their business or not. And it gives them that opportunity within 24 hours, it's $497, that's everything though. Hosting, domain, registration, SSL, design, done. The whole thing shebangs, one year of hosting, if it works great, then awesome. If not, then all you lost was five hundred dollars in the year. Yeah, it's almost like a micro website. Is yeah. what it is, right? It's only, and uh, five hundred dollars a year in advertising. If you're in business, if you're in it business, you can't afford five hundred. Then, then you, sh you shouldn't be in business, yeah. really, because you've got to have a budget for for a little bit of digital. Yeah. And, and that and that and, and the time is the big one. Believe me, I I've, I've had meetings with clients where I've had to have four hour long meetings before even getting to the design phase. So four hours of my time just before we even go through the design because it's yeah. so difficult to schedule and doing all this. It just simplifies all that. It's a survey. Really, really fresh, cool way to do it. Um, yeah. You know, what is it? Um, your biggest marketing tool, right? It's available every 24 day, hours a day. day. Yeah, that's so, what the whole my 24 hours. $500. Yeah. Yes, you break it up by minutes and the yeah. actual yeah. 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 Yes, the small business yeah. development center, you know, they'll tell you just what he just said that, um, you know, so many business owners, small business owners are busy working in their business that they don't have the time to work on their business. Right. 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 And so even though they say it's, it's important, they just don't do it. It's yeah. like the critical, or it's important but not critical, right? So right. you're filling that gap. Right. That's that's the whole idea. And your your website is is online all the time, like we were talking about. You know, it's always available. It used to be websites used to be only an online brochure. That's how websites started. It was your your way of just contact information. What do we offer? And, and this is how you find us. But now there's so much more. Now you can buy, you know, they're the engine to e-commerce now. Mm -hmm. They're changing that entire dynamic. They're, they're the whole, they're a whole new scope, a whole new window into businesses. How to order, you can order food now. You can order Starbucks and pick it up. You can order Chipotle and pick it up. You can order Subway even and build your own sandwich. That, which Subway got so successful with that simplifying the chain line at a restaurant where you walk up and you just ask for all your things and then you walk out. Now you can just build it on your phone and pick it up. You know, you don't have to wait in the line anymore. So online and digital is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's always available. So when you when you're dealing with time zones too, you know we have a lot of tourists that come through here who are on a they're in completely different time zones, and if if you don't have a website, they can't call you to find out if you're open on a certain day because they're coming through on their tour that next week. You might lose that business. They might call the next. They might see the the information to another business near you online because they have a website and, and contact them through the contact form. Right, because if somebody types in, let's say somebody's not from here, or even if they are, but if Tim didn't have a website, right. uh, if somebody puts in a uh, saddle shop in Mojave County, saddle shop in Kingman, nothing would come up. If they found it in Vegas, they're going to go to Vegas. That's yeah. right. right. You know. So wait for your customers to interact with you. That's no, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The apps have kind of fallen by the wayside. They don't have any of the international travelers who turn the apps it, about it, communities. Yeah. No, it's all websites. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mobile friendly mm -hmm. websites. Yeah. And when I was doing the, the Ramada marketing and operations over there, I talked about looking up some statistics on all that. Um, it, it, it's like 95% of all of the, uh, the Asian travelers are using mobile web searches, not app searches. Mobile yeah. web, they're on devices searching out information about restaurants and places to stop and stay and look at. So that's really important. And apps, apps are only, and as somebody who owns cell phone stores, you know, um, and I've been around since the very first apps and watched it, how it, it, the, the transition of people using it and the age groups and what they're using it for, I can tell you more information about apps than you'd ever want to know. Uh, but one of the things that's most important is people only download apps that they find critical to use or extremely entertaining to, to use. So they do not just download apps. You know, we live an hour and a half from Vegas. When you first moved here, did you download a Vegas app? No. To find out restaurants and places? No. No, if you needed to search out something to stay at a hotel, you probably looked on a computer before going and booked your room or did it from your phone. Um, but you weren't downloading an app, installing it, allowing it all permissions onto your phone just so you could then get all these ads popping up when you're trying to do it. Right. So, right. so apps are really, do you use online banking apps? Yes, that's kind of critical because it's you, your money on the go. Do you use email apps? Of course. 
you know, and a lot of people use games. I don't have a game in mind, but some people use games. But when it comes to other apps from other app developers, it just doesn't make any sense. Especially like a town you're just driving through. Yeah. You're not going to, oh, I'm going to uh, to uh, Wickenburg. I better download right. an app to find and, out and where apps, it is. Mm -hmm. Apps aren't indexed by Google. So Google doesn't, doesn't it relates all <coughs> mobile, uh, website data first and then app data second. So that would be, oh. let's say I'm, I'm a traveler and I'm trying to search for a pizza place and I invested all my money into an app, not into a website. That that web that app won't show up in my search. I have to oh click God. the store, the app store, to search for that business. People don't use app stores to search. They use search to search Google, Yahoo, Bing. So that's why that. that's super super wow. important. Yeah, because Google doesn't want to, to get into a situation where it's uh, deterring I, Apple app search and Play Store app search and Windows Phone app search. So it just it just lower indexes it. It just does web websites instead. So there's a, there's a lot to it. I've got a few final little things here for you. Kingman Center for the Arts, uh, the gallery at 208 East Beale Street is having their first Friday reception, January 5th, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. That's always a lot of fun. Uh, Reedy Press is back. They had that disastrous fire. Uh, I should have some of my books, uh, 100 Things to Do in Route 66, next week or so. And uh, and then Jim Ross's new book is through them too. You can find them at readypress.com. They were they had a fire just uh, before Christmas, kind of torpedoed the entire Christmas season. There was a huge fire too. About two hundred thousand books wow. lost. Wow. Yeah. Uh, tying in with your fairground situation, that is the thing we've got going. Is um, I uh, worked the deal out with Melissa Beasley, who's the uh, president of the uh, New Mexico Rich Association. They put out a great journal, and uh, we're going to be doing a news from our neighbors section in there. I mean, so basically, a calendar of events things going on along the Route 66 corridor in Arizona will be published in the journal for the New Mexico Route 66 Association. Wow. And we worked out a deal similar to that with the Canadian Route 66 Association, so updates of things we're doing here will be published in their journal as well. Awesome. And we've got that set up also. We can uh, get things up on the uh, German, Czech, and uh, Dutch sites now. There's calendar events, things going on. Okay. Wow, all, all that's do. huge progress. Yes. And before we wrap this thing up, we, we have left kind of Greg out, which is kind of unusual. Yeah. <laughs> You've got some stuff going down long. You even made the paper. Yes, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah, Terry Harbour interviewed Allie and I the other day uh, for the Mojave Valley Daily News, who was pretty awesome. So there's a couple of photos. I have to get some copies of that. So it was, it was really neat. It was a very nice article. So we're at the uh, Florida Greco Fine Art Gallery at the Laughlin Outlet Center. And we have, uh, we're going to do an art installation in Harris in April. They contacted us. So uh, things are happening. Mm -hmm. You know, things are really happening. Yeah, it's it's just, just something um, was going to bring up to Greg Vaughn uh, earlier. He's actually graciously has going to help us design the entr new entranceway into the fairgrounds. We'll be using metal art and a lot of railroad ties and natural stone, things like that. We're just now designing it, trying to get financing, of course, and that stuff. So. But we also have a gentleman that wants to have an art and wine and live band at the fairgrounds. Wow. And he is looking for artists, and I gave him your name. That oh, way he can start promoting that as well. And he's looking at probably three, four hundred people in an art and wine with a live band. And wow, that's great. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, count me in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Guys, thank you for doing this this morning. Any parting thoughts, final words? You know, I, I should mention something about the city, right? Uh, yeah, the, maybe. We're, we're um, you know, it's great. Um, I don't know if everybody's met our new interim city manager. His name's Jim Bacon. Um, he's a, he's a top-notch professional. He's doing a really good job. Um, he's come out of the ground, you know, he's hit the ground running, and um, we've changed the structure of our meetings, so the city council meetings are gonna, are gonna flow much more efficiently now. We're gonna start with about a 90-minute work session. Uh, to start, then we're going to convene or break, and then we're going to reconvene, and we're going to actually just do work work session items that are vote based. So that's good. We're in the middle of the, the budget process has kicked off. Um, this budget process is going to be completely different. It's going to be um, people. I think are going to see a, a big emphasis on our local roadways, which I'm really happy to report. Um, but all good things coming in 2018. I'm looking forward. El Trovatore Hill looks fantastic. Oh boy, the bike lanes, right? Yes. Yeah. And in a week. 
That's right. That was big. In a week, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, that right there, getting everybody, just getting the traffic flow problems and things yeah. like that. But being able to play that much asphalt, that much time, those guys did a great job. Are the bike lanes also equine friendly? Uh, if they got the right shoes on. <laughs> that, that's uh, Reflectors. Our, our street folks that uh, coordinated all that, they did a great job. They did a great job. That's wonderful. Yeah. Guys, thanks everybody for doing this. We're going to be looking forward to working with Tim at the fairgrounds That's and uh, making stuff. that a destination. It was nice meeting you. Thank Welcome you. to Canaan. Thank you. Yes. Guys, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll be doing yeah. this after work. <laughs> we'll be doing this again next week. We got uh, it's going to be really a good program next week. We're talking about electric vehicles, the history of electric vehicles, our museum. Uh, need to give a shout out to Mr. Thoroughgood out at uh, Laren Engineering. He stepped up to the plate because we needed storage facility for all the cars that are being donated for the museum. And they stepped up and they've offered a facility so we can start transporting the vehicles. And we'll have information about the fundraising next week uh, to pay for shipping to get some of these cars brought in. The next step that uh, long term what we'd like to see is an actual real museum here that's a full green facility possibly tied in with the community college with apprenticeship programs and alternative energy. And we'll be talking about that next week. Great. Outstanding. Guys, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. You bet, folks. See you next week.